the gospel of Jesus Christ. Occupation versus preparation. It is written. Luke 19, 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Again, it is written. Luke 1, 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Growing up in the sanctified holiness church with my granddaddy as the pastor, the one message that was always preached by a granddaddy, by a visiting evangelist, by a bishop at the Northern District Council, or any of the sanctified preachers that you would hear preach was this. You got to prepare to die. Now, in order to prepare to die, you have to be crucified with Christ. As the scriptures say, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And in order to accomplish this, you have to be crucified to the world, and the world crucified to you. As it is written, Galatians 6.14, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. This is what the world doesn't know about us, because it did not know this about Jesus Christ, which is that the first time Jesus Christ came, he came to die, to bear the sins of many, but the second time will be without sin unto salvation, as written in the Holy Scriptures, Hebrews 9, 27, 28. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. The believing Jews, which are those souls who are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with new tongues, follow the same steps that Jesus Christ did. We came like Jesus to die, as it is written, Luke 9.23. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. The cross means death. We don't wear crosses around our necks. We bear crosses on our backs. We came to lose our life for life eternal, which is our preparation. As the scriptures say, John 12, 25, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. All the days of our lives are in holiness and righteousness before him. Luke 175. We are preparing to die. Those who are not preparing to die are all men most miserable. Why? Because they have hope in Christ, but in this life only. Their hope in Christ is wealth, health, and material things, blessing plans, and prosperity, which are in this life only. This will have a miserable outcome, as it is written. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Because the truth is, it doesn't matter what folks have been healed from. It doesn't matter what folks have been blessed with. If they have not made their calling and election sure, then they are not prepared for the things that God has promised them that love him. As the scriptures say, 2 Peter 1, 9 through 11. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see a fall and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling 
and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Their hope in this life only has blinded them. And they don't know the difference between occupation and preparation. Occupation is only in this life. Preparation is for the life everlasting to come. Jesus Christ says, Occupy till I come. Doing what? Work to eat. That's an occupation. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. That's an occupation, which is to leave father and mother, to cleave to, which is marry, a wife. This is an occupation. Mark 10, 6-9 But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. So then there are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. That's an occupation. Be fruitful and multiply, which is to have children with your wife for your family. This is an occupation. Genesis 1, 27 through 28. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. This is what the disciples of the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, whose name is Jesus Christ, does. We occupy until he comes. But that is not preparation. Preparation is what makes us so worthy of this great salvation. The first thing we bring are fruits worthy of repentance. Matthew 3 and 8. Which are a broken heart and a broken and contrite, which is sorrowful spirit. As the scriptures say, Psalms 51, 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou wilt not despise. How do we know? Because a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart is godly sorrow, which works repentance in the soul. 2 Corinthians 17, for godly sorrow work of repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. With repentance to salvation, that soul has lost their life and is dead to sin, that from now on they don't serve sin. As the scriptures say, Romans 6, 6 and 7, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. You see, sorrow of the world works death. Why? Because folks are just sorry that they got caught. Worldly sorrow is being sorry that they have to pay a penalty for the iniquities and sins they did. With social media, we see this all the time. Folks will post something evil and wicked, and then when a penalty comes with that post, then they say, I apologize. That's not the real me. Yes, it is. That's why you posted it. They just didn't believe it would have gone over as bad as it did. But that's what's in their heart. How uh, do we know? Because if it was accepted, then they would continue doing it. I'm old enough to remember when a man would have dressed like a woman and would have come anywhere near an elementary school for any reason, when he got caught, he would have been punished by the law with possible imprisonment and fines, if not both. And in court, he would have been apologizing and saying he was sorry. That's worldly sorrow. 
Oh, do we know? Because in this wicked and perverse generation today, the lawmakers, school boards, and the very president of the United States don't charge those men that dress like women and go to these schools with anything illegal. In fact, they invite them in to read stories and sometimes to perform in front of five-year-olds and younger. But I thought that these folks were sorry for that behavior just a few years ago in my lifetime. They weren't sorry. That's what's in their heart. So you see, worldly sorrow is just sorry that you got caught and punished. But if there's no punishment, folks will continue on and even do worse things. That's occupying. But that's not the occupying that Jesus Christ wants us to do. Jesus Christ says this is the occupying that he requires as it is written. Matthew 6, 31 through 34. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now after your first step of preparation, which is repentance, then you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, which is your funeral. This is when you die. And Christ comes alive in your earthen vessel, as the scriptures say, Romans 6, 3 and 4. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also should we walk in newness of life. Again, it is written, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Receiving the Holy Ghost, speaking with new tongues, is the sign that follows the believer who has made preparations. Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Preparations of loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and might. Teaching these commandments diligently to your children. Binding God's word in your hands with the Holy Scriptures Bible authorized by King James. And posting the scriptures on your door and your gates. As the scriptures say. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Shema Yishel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. The husband reverencing, which is respect and esteem for his wife. 1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. The husband loving his wife, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Ephesians 5.24 The husband loving his wife as his own body. Ephesians 5.28 
For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Ephesians 5.23 These are preparations. Therefore, the wife submit herself to her own husband as unto the Lord. Ephesians 5.22 And as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wife be subject to her own husband in everything. Ephesians 5.24 That's preparation for eternal life. Walking in the Spirit so that you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5.16 That's preparations for eternal life. Loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Galatians 5.14 That's preparation for eternal life. As the scriptures say, Ephesians 4.32 And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So when you are about to pass from this world to the world to come, which is to go all the way of the earth, death, the body returning to dust, as it is written, 1 Kings 2, 1 and 2. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and shew thyself a man. Then, doing this, you are prepared to meet thy God. Those not prepared, that were not born again of the water, being buried in water, in baptism, in the name of Jesus Christ, Acts 2.38, that were not born again of the Spirit, being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with new tongues, Acts 19.6, who did not overcome the world, Revelation 3.5, they are unprepared. Now they have to prepare for the fire. As the scriptures say, Matthew 25.41, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Somebody got to tell. Amen and amen.